Hello, New Hope. It's Pastor Gary, and I hope this devotional finds you doing well and in good health. Uh, I normally don't add a title to devotionals, but I think this one deserves one. I want to talk to you today about the two, quote, let nots, end quote, from John 14. I want to begin with a quote that is attributed to Mark Twain. However, there's, I guess there's no real uh, proof that he actually said it, but it does make sense. Supposedly, Twain said, if you don't read the newspaper, you are uninformed. If you do, you're misinformed. And quoting from another uh, such uh, author uh, from the book of Hezekiah in the Bible, of course, there is no such thing. It's thou shalt turn off the news, and thou shalt read your Bible. And uh, I think those are two good things that will help lead into our devotional today. Jesus said in John 14, 1, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. So that's the first of the two let nots that I want to uh, read about, talk about to you, uh, to you today. So first of all, uh, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, heart here in this portion of scripture denotes your deepest inner human thoughts and fears, your hopes and your hurts, what you're going through now and so forth. These are the things that afflict you in the wee hours of the morning, in the night when it's dark and when you can feel your heart beat and uh, things that that should be still around you, perhaps noises that cause you to fear. These are the things that we read about in our newspapers or watch on TV news and so forth. And these are the things when pondered, they bring on wave after wave of chills sometimes, chills of fear. Jesus went on to say in Matthew 14, 27, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So why? Well, it, that verse prefaces the statement, let not your heart be troubled, uh, with God has given us his peace, not as the world gives, but as God gives. Peace as the world gives is a false peace. It's based on a false premise. It denotes a lack of open conflict. It's, it's dependent really on human beings being mutually suppressing in our nature. Uh, we suppress past history. We suppress things we disagree on and so forth. So the only peace that the world has is a peace that is a lack of conflict. But this is not that. No, this is a peace from God. In the Hebrew, that peace from God is the Hebrew word shalom. Shalom means peace, wholeness, fullness from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Peace from God comes from a relationship with him. It comes from his spirit being with us in those wee hours of the morning when we are troubled. It, it is a peace that floods over us, not like the world gives, but like only God can give. This is a peace that passes understanding. You know, there are several verses in Scripture. I've picked some from a couple of Paul's books that I want to read to you. In Galatians chapter 5, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, and then the next one, peace. And again, this is the peace that God gives, that the Spirit brings. Not that the peace type of peace is being a lack of conflict in the world. No, but this is a wholeness spiritually that comes from God and from his love and from relationship with him. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15, it says, By setting aside in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations, 
His purpose, his purpose was to create himself one new humanity out of two, thus making peace. So here we have the two spirits of two human beings who are not alike coming together in the unity of the spirit. In the context from Ephesians, we're talking about the Jew and the Gentile. How can they ever have peace when there is so much difference between the two? Well, it comes through the Spirit of God quickening them through the blood of the Lamb, Jesus, who has forgiven us from all of our sins and who wants to bring us into the presence of God. So that was taken care of at the cross. He made peace between Jew and Gentile, two completely different types of people. In Philippians, it says this, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds. Looking back at, at John 14, let not your hearts be troubled. So remember that this peace of God that transcends all human understanding will guard your heart and your mind, and it's through Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ. In Philippians, it goes on to say, whatsoever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. So in other words, here Paul is exhorting the Philippians in chapter nine and uh, chapter four and verse nine. He is he, he is exhorting them to take the word of God that they have heard, their understanding of the Christian way of life that Paul had taught them, and then put that into practice, and God would take care of them and would give them peace. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Then from Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. So here it's, it's a willingness on our part to allow the Lord to give us his peace. It's a refusal on our part to push aside those things that are so distressing to us and to rely on the peace of God. Does that mean we're not going to have trouble? No. Does it mean that that everything is going to be swell? No. Does it mean that we'll never have heartache? No. But there's a way through it that God will bring us through. The old adage that God will pull you through it if you can stand the pull applies here. So let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. It says in Colossians 3.15, since the members of one body, you are called to peace. And then he adds as a postscript, and be thankful. In 2 Peter 1.2, grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. You know, it's, it's really when we step back out of the presence of God and out of the word of God ruling in our hearts, it's only then that, that such disturbances are able to get hold of us. So again, quoting from Hezekiah, again, a non-existing book. Turn off the TV for a while. Shut off the news. Get your head in the book. Get your heart minding the things of the Lord and the peace of God that passes all understanding. It'll take control if we let it. God is good if we give him half a chance. And he wants to bring peace to you. And he wants to bring peace to your heart. Hallelujah. God bless you. I hope you have a marvelous day. And may the peace of God reign and rule in your heart. Amen. God bless.